The selective service will be adding a few good women, or all women actually, to its rosters if the bill to require women to register upon turning 18 continues to advance. Now, the House Armed Service Committee approved the proposal 35 to 24, with all Democrats and some Republicans even supporting. And is it a part of a must pass military budget policy bill? But does a woman not registering for the draft send a message they are not as important in the defense of the U.S.? Well, our 360 panel joins us to discuss. Roy Riley's Toppings, conservative commentator and strategist, and Reese Everson, attorney and founder of the Bush Project. Thank you for joining me, ladies. Thank you. I mean, Thank I, you. I guarantee this is a conversation that I, our grandmothers probably never thought we would be having in the fact that not only our generation, but the next generation of women could be registering for the draft. So let me start with you on this one, Rory. Was this ever, do you think, the intention of the women's rights movement? I don't necessarily think it was the intention of the women's rights movement, but I think that says more about our society at large than it does specifically about the women's rights movement. All this talk about what's going on in Afghanistan lately shows that really in a post-Vietnam era, we're not really thinking about the draft at all. We haven't had to use it since that time. So I think it's not just the women's rights movements, but conversations around the draft have been far from everyone's mind for a long time. And that's the thing is I think, and that's why I told my mother, actually, I said, Mom, I, did you think in your generation that you would have a draft where men would have to be called up automatically to go? And she said, no, obviously not and, and when she was growing up, but that's what happened in her generation. Reese, do you actually think this is a good idea? And up until now, do you think women have felt slighted by not having to register for the draft? It's an absolutely terrible idea. Um, what we know for a fact is that there are thousands of cases, hundreds of cases rather, where women have uh, enlisted in the army and gone missing. And what we have seen time and time again is that the military has failed these women. What we know is that one in three women are um, going to be sexually harassed or raped in the, while serving in the military. What we know is that cases of women such as Labina Johnson, whose body was found mutilated and burned with acid pouring on her genitals, she was, it was never investigated and the military covered it up by calling it a suicide. We know that young ladies like Vanessa Gillian have gone missing and the families have been basically given the runaround. We know that Tina Priest reported that she was raped to her mother and two weeks later was found killed. So no, I think it's a horrible idea to require young women to enlist into the military because the military has not shown that it is anything other than a toxic and hostile work environment for women. You know, it's interesting, Reese. I, I, from what you just said, those are some of the same things that I found when I talked to women who are in the military and the issues they have. So is that a part of the problem? Obviously, we've seen a lot of culture changes over the years in dealing with this, Rory. But in this case, with the military that has been so for so long, their whole goal is national security or focused on fighting. Do you think in the time that this bill is going to pass that they'll actually be able to reform, put those kind of safeguards? And if we actually have the time to do it in the climate we're in, before it happens, are we not just setting ourselves up for an even bigger issue happening internally than the enemy that we're fighting? The enemy might be actually within in this case. Well, I think that you're exactly right, Scotty. And as with so many things, oftentimes the devil is in the details. And that's certainly the case here with this issue around women in the draft. As Reese alluded to, alluded to when we started welcoming in women into the military, it wasn't always a smooth transition for many of them. And unfortunately, I think the military has a lot to work on internally, as you just stated, as opposed to what happens necessarily when we're focused on another war. I mean, presumably, if we're drafting anybody, it's because we're on a war of a grand scale. I mean, we were just at war for 20 years, and we didn't have to re-implement the draft. So in that way, this seems like it's almost a non-issue. But at the same time, the very real scenario of addressing the issues that women who are already serving in the military, not because they were drafted, but because they chose to, Making sure that they don't have to deal with sexual assault and harassment seems like it should be a more pressing thing for congressional oversight to currently be focused on than perhaps this issue surrounding the draft. And that's what I think, Reese. When I think, I think this just sounds nice. There, sure, it sounds great, equality for all. But when you actually get down to the details, you go, you know what? This probably doesn't actually sound so good. Another issue, and I'm, and I'm glad that you brought this up, Rory, is that if a draft happened, it would be in a time of war, a time of crisis, that so that they had to do. But are we actually thinking about the future of America if there is a draft put into place, Reese, where a large percentage are called to the women to the battlefield and they don't come back home? What could that do to future generations of Americans if there's no one to produce them? 
Absolutely, and and we have to be clear that there is a biological difference between women. There, and, and that's just the reality of it. And when we attempt to blur the lines and say that, oh well, women are equal to men, I don't really believe that. As we reflect and get clarity uh, moving forward, that the feminist movement really wanted uh, women to be equal to men in everything. They wanted equal pay. They wanted to be able to have equal opportunities, but not to be mandated to fight in a war because there are biological differences that just simply can't be blurred. The other issue is that um, what what we know is that um, right. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I know. That's it. You've already given us so much information, Reese. I really appreciate it. This is a conversation we'll continue to follow because I'm going to be interested to see if pushback actually comes and who it actually comes from. I bet a lot of women are feeling kind of the same concerns we are. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. I just have one question for these dirty cunts. If you're not willing to fight and die for your country, will you give up the right to vote?